Here is a list of 12 great movies that help my anxiety go away. Number one, Contact. Contact is my favorite movie of all time. I don't need any reason to watch this movie. I know it's a tense movie at certain parts, but it always made me hopeful. I remember leaving the theater feeling like there could be a cool future ahead of us where we get to meet aliens. My favorite part was with the cool blue ocean scene, Pensacola, where Ellie is talking to the alien and you can see the sky around her appears to be gelatinous. You can see stars and galaxies in the distance. That scene is permanently branded into my head. And to me, it's the best first contact scenario possible. There's no negotiating for technology and no fighting them. Just a short conversation. The aliens were like, here, build this thing so we can tell you to take small steps. Maybe they were evil. Maybe they send advanced IKEA plans throughout the galaxy in the form of radio signals to bankrupt planets. Interesting. For me, contact represents one of my last memories of a dying era. That era being the drive-in movies. I remember I got to go to the theater with one of my best friends and we had a great time. So not only do I love contact for everything it represents, but I also associate it with one of the best carefree nights I've ever had. I love that the main character, Ellie, built her life around the things that made her happy, regardless of what others like Drumlin thought. And I thought the subtle ending to the movie was perfect and realistic. A similar movie, Arrival, was more satisfying in this way. At the end of that one, it was clear the world had drastically changed. Watching Contact feels like a journey. I feel like I'm sitting right there with Ellie the entire movie. And at the end, I don't feel the least bit drained. I love it. Number two, Forrest Gump. Another classic movie that will help you feel better. The story follows the main character over decades until he ultimately seems at peace. That closure feels nice. Forrest Gump is that movie that you will recognize no matter what part it's on, and you'll find yourself watching it until the end. You can coach yourself through the sad parts of the film because you always know relief is never far off. Later, I read Hearts in Atlantis by Stephen King, and something in that book reminded me of Forrest Gump. And just like with Contact, it feels good to put yourself in the shoes of the main protagonist. There are elements to Forrest's character that are calming, such as his innocence. Even when he's being bullied, his personality doesn't pivot. This is nice for me because I don't have to anticipate some awkward final boss scene where Forrest finally beats up a longtime bully or kills off his arch enemy. It's a feel good movie through and through. Number three, V for Vendetta. This movie is so inspirational to me. I love watching the changes in Natalie Portman's character throughout the film. The God is in the rain scene is like one of the best things ever. I get goosebumps when I hear that line. And V's backstory and prevalence makes the movie worth watching when I need something to lift my spirits. The fact that he has nothing to lose takes away a lot of the potential stress from the movie. This movie has so many epic scenes that make you want to get off the couch and go out and make a difference in the world. I feel invigorated. It's like I've again been reminded of what I've already knew and keep forgetting. Now I'm ready to go out there, forget all of this again, pay my taxes and bills on time. But really, I love this movie. It's violent and the parallels to our world can be a bit scary if you allow yourself to go down that road. But in the end, this movie does good things for my mental health. Number four, Interstellar. This was my favorite movie of the 2010s. The visuals, the music by Hans Zimmer, and the human struggle, all these components plus great acting make this one of the best movies ever made. Like with Contact, Interstellar makes me feel hopeful when I watch it. The movie deals with bigger picture choices that must be made for the greater good. This kind of content puts me at ease because it's about the survival of our species. From the very beginning of the movie, the audience is told that the Earth will be uninhabitable and nothing can be done to fix this. The stage is already set and now it's time to decide how we save our species. For me, this reduces the chance of the movie stressing me out. Now I can focus on the cool things in the movie. I appreciate how the director tried to bring black holes and space travel to life in a realistic way. Just because it was the not too distant future, they didn't take unnecessary liberties. Instead, they allowed the viewers to fill in the gaps with their imaginations. This makes the movie satisfying to watch. 
we got to see those blocky looking robots with some hardcore AI. But at the same time, 100 or so years in the future, we were still living in houses and playing baseball. Interstellar is the movie to watch when I'm feeling completely hopeless. So if you just got done watching the news and everything feels pointless, maybe try to give Interstellar a watch. This movie will help remind you how resilient humankind can be. Number five, Enemy Mind. This is that early childhood memory movie, at least for a kid born in the early 80s. It feels good to watch. It's another movie that isn't too heavy, even though it has its fair share of conflict. Enemy Mind will take you way back. It gives that crawl, legend, Conan the Barbarian feel that some of us crave. Nothing settles the nerves like a serious blast from the past. Try watching the original Clash of the Titans movie in VR. When I watched it back in the day, I recall Dennis Quaid's character eventually befriending the alien. The positive vibes that come from these new BFFs will set you up for a nice day. Trust me, if you haven't watched this movie, give it a try. Number six, The Lion King. The music alone makes this worth the watch. You wanna feel good? Well, you can always count on Hans Zimmer to brighten your afternoon. The music in this film really makes the movie. The movie gives you a sense of belonging. Simba's instincts help him find his way home to be the king he was meant to be. Whenever I feel lost, I can spend 90 minutes watching The Lion King. Simba will always show me my way back. You get to watch Simba grow up, make friends, deal with pain, confront evil, and triumph in the end. It's just what the doctor ordered. Number seven, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. I think most pure 90s kids will agree with me. Now I'm gonna take a second here and say that a pure 90s kid is a kid that could say, I'm going outside to play to their parents from 1990 to 1999 without someone coming to grab them before they headed out the door. Anyways, this movie is classic. I can quote so much of this movie and it's a fun watch. Once you decide to watch Temple of Doom, you already know it's gonna be an adventure. It has all the things you want in a Sunday afternoon classic. A funny sidekick, unbelievable physics, edge of your seat action, and an epic story. Plus, it's another chapter in a greater story about Indiana Jones. This movie is magic to me from start to finish. Monkey brains, anyone? You can really imagine yourself in place of the main characters. This is the perfect movie to watch when you're feeling down, but you have just enough energy for one good ride. Number eight, The Man From Earth. This is one of those movies that will make you think deeper. It's dialogue heavy, but very engaging. I know a lot of people haven't watched this movie, so I won't spoil it too much. Instead, I'll encourage you to watch it when you have the time. I suggest watching it when your brain is running on all cylinders, or you might miss something. This movie helps me with my anxiety by forcing me to think outside the box. Each time the main character makes a seemingly outrageous statement, it forces the viewer to think more about the possibility of what was said. It's highly addictive and thought provoking. Number nine, life. I have a bittersweet love for this movie. Watching these two men spend most of their adult lives in prison for a crime they didn't commit upsets me quite a bit. Still, I find myself drawn to watching this movie because there are so many funny people in it and all the scenes are hilarious. And just like reading a good book, sometimes I feel like I, the reader, am playing a part in helping the main characters get to their final conclusion. It's like this for the movie Life. I feel compelled to be a supportive viewer for Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence's characters. I push through as they try to make the best of their messed up situation and I feel pretty good by the end of the movie. Number 10. Summer Wars. This is an all around feel good movie that can be watched by the whole family. This film comes from the same animation studio as The Girl Who Leapt Through Time, and it is beautifully done. By the end of this movie, you will feel great, and you will be recommending this movie to other people. Even if you haven't yet developed an appreciation for anime, you'll watch every bit of Summer Wars. You'll likely have to make a one time purchase for this one though. I haven't seen it available to stream free anywhere. This is a good one to watch if you're stressed, but maybe you have family around. They'll enjoy this one too. Just put it on and everyone will love it. Number 11, The Martian. I listened to this as an audiobook as well as watched the movie 
and it's an emotional roller coaster ride. Again, this is one of those films where I put myself in the shoes of the protagonist and it becomes a totally different experience. I imagine what it might be like to be left alone on Mars, and it feels like more than just watching a movie. Matt Damon does a great job making this character believable, and you'll cheer him on all the way through. The Martian is an adventurous, funny, emotional, colorful, and is an all-around good watch. If you have the bandwidth, I recommend reading it or listening to the audiobook first. This movie helps me feel less anxious, just like Contact, because it makes me hopeful for the not-too-distant future. A human mission to Mars is the obvious next step, so this movie helps to satisfy that hopeful part of me that would love to witness that achievement. Number 12, Tomorrowland. A movie that for some reason didn't do nearly as well as it should have at the box office. It's hopeful, fun, interesting, and leaves you wondering about the future. I actually paid for this one from Amazon before it became available on Disney+. Plus. This movie was so medicinal for me that I watched it at least once every month. I think the reason I like Tomorrowland so much is because it feels like the world we were promised when we were children. If I were a fifth grader, this film would inspire me to do my homework and pay attention in class so that I could help build this new world of tomorrow. It seems the intention of the writers of this movie was to inspire people. And that's exactly what this movie did for me. So when you choose to invest up to three hours of your time in front of the TV, you probably don't want to feel anxious when the movie is over. How often have you gone into a theater on a Saturday evening on the heels of a beautiful sunny afternoon just to come out to a dark parking lot having just watched something horrific or depressing? I did this with the movie Knowing with Nicolas Cage. I had a great night out with a buddy and we decided to end the night watching the movie and we did actually enjoy it, but it completely killed our buzz. What a waste of a perfect evening. You can't expect every movie to be an inspirational masterpiece, but if I've already had a tough mental health day, I'm just looking to feel better. So what do I do? I reach into my movie medicine cabinet and I find a film that's going to relieve me of the stress and anxiety I've built up throughout the day. What are some of your favorite movies for anxiety? What cheers you up? What inspires you? Thanks again for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe and check my channel out. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Just search for at travel and math. My blog will also be available February 6th, so check it out at travelandmath.com. See you the same time next Friday. Thanks.